game number two here. Let's turn this chat off before people start talking shit, as always. And uh, actually, technically game three, we missed the first game. We saw the second game, which was our first game. And Jon Snow, of course, with his 1TC power play, doing awesome, uh, as always. And uh, now... Wubba lubba dub dub, game number two, Jon Snow versus Kongensgard once again, Jon Snow in the blue playing as the Byzantines, and on the left side of the map in the red trunks we have Kongensgard 42 playing as the Byzantines as well. Uh, yeah, I don't need my foot to stream, my foot could be amputated for all I care, I could still stream, but I did have to elevate it. I had to put my foot on the chair, so I kind of can't, I don't know, I struggle to sit 90 degrees to the screen and manage to... Do it. Did ah no no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> sorry. Um, I scrolled up. I didn't see any questions. Did anyone ask any questions? Um, let me see. How is your leg? Are you better? Kind of. I think I've already answered that question. Um, I don't think there were any more questions, Nimino. So yeah. Uh, bets. We could do bets. If anyone wants to do bets, I Victoria, so you could do bets. Um, but you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on the game and the chat as well because I'm really gonna make a conscious effort to try and uh, watch the chat a bit more because it's just a casual stream it's just a bit of fun and um, it's not all super duper uber serious today uh, Nimino, uh, do the clips from clip of the day have to be expert players no they don't um, obviously it's kinda lame if you're a massive smurf and you do something to someone it's really humiliating because they're really bad at the game and you're actually really good that it's kind of not really the essence of what clip of the day is supposed to be about. But if you are, uh, you know, if you have a good clip and it's not like a ridiculous smurf killing someone in a ridiculous way that's not actually legit, then send it to, and I'll have a look. I actually have a lot of clips lined up that I've not got around to doing because I've been lazy these last few days. I thought, you know, I'm ill. Uh, I may as well just sit on my ass and actually take some time off, even though I just was in Prague last week. But, you know... Whatever. <laughs> so, a Byzantine war on arena. That's interesting. You don't see that every day. I'd be interested to see if Jon Snow does his kind of, you know, castle drop style play. I could only assume these guys went for mirror random sieves, right? So, in this situation, a castle drop making cataphracts not really a good idea. Cataphracts are not very good in the castle age at raiding. They die very quickly to archer fire. If a defensive castle is in place, then they're basically going to suck. So, a castle drop is an interesting sort of thing. Like, usually, civs that want to do a castle drop are civs that have a good, unique unit that they can use in the castle age. That's why the Turks are so sick, because their janissaries are awesome. They're insane. Um, you know, they're, they're not that expensive. For the value you get out of them, you could do so much damage. Uh, Byzantines don't really have that. They could go for crossbows in the Castle Age. I think that could work if they want to de map control and take relics. Now, Kongensgard having a pretty derpy start to the game here with this villager. She's been idle for a long while, and I'm not quite sure how he's managed to do that. He must have, like, misclicked his gather point or some shit. He must have, like, clicked there um, instead of there. I mean, that's a pretty big misclick to make, but I guess if you're playing quite, you know quite quickly you could do these things uh, but that's actually lost him quite a bit of wood which is a little awkward because um, it's a little awkward haha <laughs> because he's gonna need farms and stuff later but you know it's not really a, a huge deal a little bit of resources lost go cry about it I guess I mean the, the thing is here obviously Jon Snow you can see the difference in wood gathered here Jon Snow a good like you know 100 wood ahead that is um, something that's good for him and I wouldn't sniff at that if I was Jon Snow I would like to have the extra wood in the bank um, yeah <laughs> sorry guys I'm in a really weird mood today I'm in, a, I'm in a good mood it's actually um quite a nice day and I've been feeling good about life recently so yeah things are things are nice I've been applying to jobs recently uh, I'm trying to get a job doing what I do now but actually for a company who will pay me to do it because I recently applied for a job that was basically a community and streaming manager and they wanted someone to stream on Twitch and make YouTube videos and they were going to pay £34,000 a year which is uh, 68000 Canadian dollars a year to do that and I was like yeah that's that's me I applied for it but sadly they already had someone by the time I applied and I didn't even get an interview which really sucked but if I can get something like that I'd be pretty freaking happy because that would be insane since I already do it It'd be awesome. <laughs> Ivic, 
picking on Bullet Chen. Come on, be nice. Bullet Chen is like my wingman. <laughs> Only he's not really, but whatever. He can be. You can now be my wingman. I like Bullet Chen. Bullet Chen's a really nice guy. So anyway, uh, this game, I mean, we, we can talk shit for a bit because not a lot is going on right now. We can look at the relics. They're closer to Kongan's guard. He has three, Jon Snow has two. The gold positions look bad for Kong and the Scarred. He's got both his golds on the front, his second and third gold, sorry. His stone on the front, he has got a back gold. But other than that, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's not amazing for him. He has a relics advantage, but we'll see if that really matters too much. Jon Snow, meanwhile, he has a similar situation. His second and third gold way out on the front there. His other main gold is on the front, so arguably his map is worse. Arguably, um, you could say that. It all depends on sort of like, you know, whether a castle drop comes in or something like that. Uh, I'll have to wait and see. Obviously for now, it's the classic 26 population, fast feudal into castle age, into, uh, you know, not fast feudal, sorry, fast castle into whatever aggression they go for. Now, knowing Jon Snow, he's probably going to play very aggressive. We can watch his eco over the next few minutes to kind of ascertain what he is going to do. Um, I, I like that word. Ascertain is a, a good word. I don't think I say that very often. Ascertain. That's a nice one. It, you know, it's got the word ass in it. Personally, I like ass. So, yeah, ascertain. He's gonna. We're going to be able to find out what he's going to do. Um, if he starts taking some stone, we'll get an indication. But he's not doing that at the moment. No stone income at all. And with the Byzantines, you know, maybe we could just see a kind of 2TC build up or something like that now. Jon Snow, sorry, Kong has got also not taking any stone. He is taking three villagers on gold though, and at the moment, I mean, it looks like both these guys are going to pull off a pretty quick fast castle anyway. I mean, they're both going to be very, very close going up to the castle age. I think Kong and Scarred sent his villagers over to gold a little later, and that's why he has three there rather than two. Jon Snow sent them earlier, so he's already got the 200 gold, but he doesn't have as much food. Market blacksmith coming up, um, deer being lured through the wall, and of course, uh, Kongan Scott already got his all of his deer. So if you have a look at the food gathered, you can see Kongan Scott is ahead. It's no surprise, really. Now, what is he doing over here? He's building another mining camp. He's gonna go for monks. That is what we can ascertain about this situation. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, he's gonna go for monks. Clearly, he's sending those vills out there to the gold. That gold's gonna get pounded, and uh, these vills are gonna be just. Yeah, mining, 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 and uh, Jon Snow not doing that. Three villas out on gold at the moment. He's going to want more than that if he's planning on monks. What is he doing then? Let's see. If he sends more villas out to wood, that's usually an indicator that he's going to drop a couple of TCs. If he sends more villas out to gold, it's an indicator that he'll go for monks as well. And in, yeah, there you go, sending more villas out to gold. Not as many as Kongan's got, so I expect we'll see some kind of like, I know, um, TC and a monastery, or maybe we'll see a monastery and a siege workshop from Jon Snow, depending on how aggressive he wants to be. Uh, he has got a lot of wood in the bank, like, that's a lot of wood right there. 550 wood, he's gonna need a few farms though, because the forage is about to run out, the deer are about to run out, and he needs wood to build the farms, it's important. He could throw down a TC, but if he's planning on doing a couple of monasteries, or a monastery and a, um, and his siege workshop, he is going to need more uh, wood as well if he wants to do that and a TC. So I think it's going to be aggression. You wouldn't have that many villagers on gold if you weren't planning on going very aggressive in this kind of situation. Kongan's guard then, lots of uh, lots of wood as well, sending villas forward already. It looks like he's going to be, you know, putting his villagers into a forward position to maybe. I don't know, throw down a siege workshop, something like that? Let's find out. Well, monastery, first of all, of course, because all that gold. Uh, but having the monks in a forward position, or the monasteries in a forward position, does allow you to be more aggressive, does allow you to kind of, you know, these relics at the back are basically his now, because he's built in front of them. Maybe he'll even go for the relics on the front. Gonna be ballsy. Jon Snow, two monasteries as well. I, I, I guess we kind of expected monasteries here. It's basically what these guys are going to do on Arena. It's just that standard of a kind of meta game where we know what they're gonna, what's going to happen. Uh, obviously, Kongan's got a little bit ahead. He's already got his monks coming out. Look at that. 30... 38% as the first monastery for Jon Snow comes up. 
Conquer Scott just chilling out with his scout, chilling like a villain in the center of the map, and that is a third monastery for Congen Scott. This guy is going nuts. He's off the wall. Third monastery. Why not? Uh, go, go ham. Go nuts. Um, three monasteries at a time. Now this is a risky play. The reason why this is more risky is because if he loses these monasteries then he's going to be in a bit of trouble, isn't he? Um, the relics will be lost, and that's basically that. Scout here. Oh, is he going to get a conversion? He could, but obviously Scout's pretty resistant to conversion. Atonement coming in for both players right now. As it stands, neither of those guys can attack each other's monks, but oh, Congress got off to a great start. He will get one kill. He'll, he'll kill his own Scout cavalry there, and there's Atonement, so he can go and convert. Jon Snow's monk immediately, and now Kong has got a huge advantage. Looks like he'll be able to grab himself the relic. If he's not careful, though, he will lose a monk. He's going to delete it as well, and that's the power of the monk. I mean, you'd rather delete your own monk uh, and delete your own units than let your opponent get them. Conversion for Kong and Scar, though. He's going to run back now and maybe bait Jon Snow into him, but look at this. Jon Snow TC on the front. He's really paranoid about that gold, and I don't blame him. It's right on the front. A mangonel or something, or monks for that matter, can convert these villas, can disrupt things over here. Now, Jon Snow doesn't know how many monks or monasteries Kong and Scarred has. He knows, however, that there is a siege workshop there, and uh, I think that's a risky move, putting the TC up, but four monasteries for Jon Snow. Now, this is really, again, ballsy, because first of all, he's not gonna get any relics here. Both of these relics outside of his walls now belong to Kong, and he is gonna bring them back to his mo uh, monasteries. He's gonna grab the relics on the back later. I mean, he's not got to rush about that, but getting the ones on the front, they are secured. So that's gonna be five relics versus a big fat zero. He's also got a better gold position, you know? This gold cannot be harassed by Jon Snow. Jon Snow's gold, yeah, that's on the front. He's got to have a lot of villas there in a really, really precarious situation, position. And, uh, well, we'll see what happens next. Obviously, uh, text coming in here so that Jon Snow can convert Siege and stuff like that. Manganel going to go for the uh, TC. About four monasteries. I don't think he can support production from four monasteries. He's only got two monks on the, on the go at the moment here. How is he going to afford to do more? I don't know. But the conversion on the the mono, uh, sorry, on the Manganel incredibly quickly popping that one off. And it uh, looks like Kong and Scarred here going to have to GB. Otherwise, he'll lose his scout as well. But yeah, he's going to have to go get some uh, counter conversions pretty quickly. I think Kong and Scarred may be, may be getting a little lax on the uh, monk production. But he will take down that Manganel with his own, his own mangonel, with his own mangonel, and now of course the monk micro comes into play, Kongan Scott off to a good start, he'll get one, he'll get two, the scout there, immediately gonna take down one of these monks however, uh, but it doesn't really matter that much, because I mean they are not his monks, they're Jon Snow's monks, they have turned against Jon Snow, and Jon Snow may even lose his scout here if he's not careful, at this point I'm not quite sure whose scout this is. I don't know if that's Kong's scout or Jon Snow's scout. I mean, it could be either. Uh, it's probably gone back and forth many times already. But as you see, Kong and Scarred grabbing the fourth and fifth relics. He's got three already. And that's going to be a lot of gold income, a lot of monk production. Uh, hello there, Casper Carter and Kalis. Welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for tuning in. And also, Augustus Caesar. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while since... Uh, we spoke, well actually we spoke a little bit the other day about your your work, but that was still a few days ago. It might have been before Prague actually, I can't remember. Congress Guard though, he is getting a little bit, look at this, God, Jon Snow right now, he's gonna, he's gonna get this monk it looks like, if he heads in this direction. Why is Kongensgard not moving his monks? I don't know. Once again, Kongensgard deleting his mangonel so as to not lose it to a conversion. I love these kind of games. I remember a game a while back where Eddie, and uh, I can't remember who he was playing were against, but uh, they both made nothing but monks all game long. It was hilarious, and it was, well, it was just fantastic. It was just a huge monk fight. I think at one point someone had more than 200 population because they converted that many of the enemy monks. And it was just back and forth for hours. But Kongan's Guard here up to the Imperial Age first. It's a 1TC power play that we uh, so dearly love. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, like, he hardly has many farms here, but it's enough to get him to imp comfortably. Jon Snow, meanwhile, he is on the two TCs. He's got a ton of uh, gold income now with all these bills on the front. He played a, a fairly ballsy move, but it looks like it's going to pay off. He's going to go for the Siege Workshop here. We'll get the conversion on that, it seems. Kongan Scard, though, probably not too concerned. He's waiting for Imperial Age. He's going to go for, like, block printing and shit like that immediately to outrange Jon Snow. Now, it takes freaking ages to convert a Siege Workshop, but, um, or any building for that matter, but it is worth it in the end. Jon Snow now battering ram coming out from the stolen siege workshop. The stolen siege workshop. I love stolen. It's my favorite cake. Uh, for those, is it a German Christmas cake? Whatever it is, it's divine. And uh, yeah, stolen is is the best. So Jon Snow to uh, to. Uh, Battering Rams, this is his window of opportunity to fight. He's gonna go for the monastery. Kong and Scarred, of course, falling back, biding his time. He wants those techs, and of course, they, he will get them. Uh, block printing coming in immediately. We called that one. We knew what was coming, and that plus three range will give him a huge advantage over Jon Snow when it comes to conversions. But still, Jon Snow gonna get a couple, and uh, looks like Kong here. With block printing nearly finished, he will be able to engage. But Jon Snow coming forwards. Who is going to win the conversion war of the century? This is uh, Wallalo Warriors. Wallalo Warrior Ring, even. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Oh my god, Kong and Scarred here. I think he's losing out. It's hard to say. These towers from Jon Snow are a genius move. They are absolutely genius. The reason for that is because any converted monks will just get taken down. But will they? The heels. The heels. Oh my god. The towers are doing nothing. Here's me thinking, oh, the towers are going to be great. But look at this tower. Okay, it is actually working now. It has stuff garrisoned inside. It needed stuff garrisoned in order to be effective. But it is difficult to see really what's going on right now. Theocracy coming in, but it's not going to finish up. This monastery is going to go down to the uh, the rams of Jon Snow. And now he's going to go for the remaining monasteries as well. And all Kong and Sky can do here is hope to get the conversions and win the game. He just is not getting that at the moment though. And these towers from Jon Snow are a stroke of genius to say the least. Siege though, coming in for Mr. Kong. It looks like he'll be able to take this tower down. It's very close, but it will fall. And in the back, making more monasteries now. But he has lost some of his relics. I think he's lost a total of three. And those relics have not been claimed by Jon Snow just yet. But Jon Snow pop blocked. He's converted quite a lot of units here. He's taken the score lead as well. Which, you know, can only be a good thing. And it'll be interesting to see the number of conversions at the end of this game. But these towers... My god, these towers are being awesome for him. He's killed so many monks with them. And if we have a look, you can see Jon Snow here has killed 19 units. He's lost 31 but Kongan's guards killed three and lost 41, obviously losing them to conversions there. It seems like, at the moment, Jon Snow is ahead in the number of conversions. And those techs, that block printing tech for Kongan's guard, not really helping him out because it took too long to come in. But he has got Theoc- oh wait, no, he doesn't have Theocracy right now. I think Theocracy got cancelled, which is uh, really, really crappy because um, I think Theocracy is the one where um, if you convert something with a group of monks only one of them loses their faith so yeah this is tough this is really tough and Jon Snow has momentum now he's got a ton of momentum these rams cleaning out the center of the map Kongensgard chemistry coming in interesting technology to go for here possibly to uh, you know what? I'm not sure why he's doing chemistry actually not sure oh unless he's maybe looking to do uh, some Bombard cannons, of course. I'm thinking about what the tech affects rather than what the tech unlocks. So yeah, probably Bombard cannons from Kongensgard here. He's going to need a bit more gold though. And the problem for him is that his gold in the back is nearly out. So he's going to have to be careful. He's going to have to hold this off with a few more conversions very soon. And uh, yeah, as chemistry comes in, we'll probably see some Bombard cannons very soon. And they are very good at taking down monks. But Kongensgard laughing now. He's like, oh god, this is hilarious. What am I going to do? All the rams go down. 
and all of his upgrades getting cancelled. Yeah, Theocracy, you saw that in the end there. Theocracy just coming in, and Kongan's guard thought he had it, but he didn't. As a result, all these monks, like all of them, at 70% on the conversion faith meter, and that is um, basically because Theocracy wasn't researched. If Theocracy had been researched, it makes it so much easier to convert, but Jon Snow gotta get the upper hand, he's gotta take the win, and uh, what an impressive little game that was. Um, rather comedic, I guess. The towers from Jon Snow were awesome. Obviously, the rams coming in as well. Both are making so many. Kong, in the end, looks like he was going to go for some bombard cannons, but uh, it didn't really work out too well. And Imperial Age isn't the be-all and end-all. Um, you know, those texts for Kong and Scott came in just a little bit too late, at which point Jon Snow made his rush, and uh, he did an awesome push. So, well played. Um, yeah, I think Kongus God did play well in the early game. He just couldn't hold on to that advantage. Jon Snow, an incredibly good arena player. Plenty of experience with Monk.